Hey you guys, this is Lonnie Clark, and that's for art. Uh, I'm going to attempt to complete the forward of the book that we're, I'm reading on my YouTube channel now, which is uh, Poison Power by uh, John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin. And uh, we've only got four pages left. We are on the forward written by uh, former Senator uh, Mike Gravel. And I'm going to read the last paragraph because it's pertinent to the next few sentences. You, prob you will probably agree with some of the ideas in this book and disagree with others and have good ideas of your own. Please let us know by writing. Your opinions count only if you express it. Don't expect overnight miracles. Very few of my colleagues in Congress are ready yet to take action on the subject. And it, it, as you know personally, it takes time to move from feeling one not interested, quote, nuclear power plants are clean and safe, unquote, two, two, number two, concerned, quote, is there really a hazard, unquote, two, two, number three, determined, quote, I will study and find out, unquote, two, number four, convinced, quote, yes, there is really a hazard, unquote, two, Number five, ready and able. It, quote, it's time to convince others, unquote. That's where we're at. Most members of Congress are somewhere between stage one and two, which is not interested or concerned. <laughs> Many will skip stages three and five. Three is determined and five is ready and able. Because it is impossible for one human being to become expert in all the subjects of public importance. Don't expect otherwise. Expect that a member of Congress will move from stage two to stage four whenever the significant numbers of home state voters, groups, experts, and newspapers assert loudly enough that there is a hazard and they expect him to do something about it. Therefore, the effective thing for you to do is to move yourself into stage five, which is ready and able. It's time to convince others. And then teach others. This is what we're doing on this channel. <laughs> you can challenge professional groups like your state medical association, your state cancer, heart, and birth defects associations, universities and high school biology professors, and your state and national representatives to take public positions on the nuclear issue. If they plead too much ignorance, insist that they have a responsibility to learn and help them to do so. In addition, you can start asking the important but presently unanswered questions about nuclear hazards. Ask the people who ought to have those answers to come to meet groups in your area. Invite the Atomic Energy Commissioners, members of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, the Atomic Industrial Forum, National Committee on Radiation Protection, executives and board members of the utilities, members of your State Public Utility Commission, State Engineering Board, and University Engineering Faculty. You may wonder why I suggest invitations to people who will favor nuclear power. I am not suggesting invitations for them to give long, rosy speeches. I am suggesting invitations for them to answer the hard questions. These are some of the people we would invite to a Senate hearing. After all, these are the people responsible for bringing us the threat of nuclear accidents and pollution. These are the men who are obliged to explain themselves and tell us why, what they know and what they do not know. The problem is, is that you must know your subject extremely well before you extend that kind of invitation. Otherwise, otherwise you will be snowed and unable to recognize a false or inadequate answer. It takes lots of knowledge just to ask the right questions. You can tune in to some of the valuable experiences of others who joined the fight earlier. Please see Appendix 2. Nobody, no one loves a complainer. Citizens who object to something, like radioactive power plants, 
will find sympathy and quicker success if they also prosper, propose a, a better solution. Safe alternatives to nuclear electricity do exist, and this book will introduce you to some. It is almost hopeless to oppose a nuclear power plant unless you think through and find endorsements for another solution in your area. Student in, students in economics and engineering may be willing to help. You will, I'm sorry, you will each have to make a personal choice. Will I work on it or just hope that others will take care of the problem for me? For make no mistake, there is a problem. Wow, we should read that paragraph again. You will each have to make a personal choice. Will I work on it or just hope that, that others will take care of the problem for me? For make no mistake, there is a problem. Suppose that no one else does the job for you successfully. The future is in, is in, the future in a badly contaminated world would be very grim. Well, brother, that's where we're at right now. Even now, every time a woman enters the maternity ward to have a baby, she faces one chance in 25 that she will give birth to a child who, has, who is seriously defective mentally or physically. Nuclear pollution make, would make the odds worse. Do American women want that? It is a fact that pregnant women, the embryos they, and the embryos they carry, are far more sensitive than anyone else to radiation changes, damages. Cancer presently kills more children than any other cause except accidents. And I think we have surpassed that already, folks. Nuclear pollution would cause even more children to suffer and die from cancer. Do citizens approve of that? Children are considerably more sensitive to radiation harm from, than adults. But adults also get cancer from nuclear pollution. If there were serious nuclear pollution, most healthy people might have to spend much of their time caring for sick people. And I think we're here, folks. This is it. Lasting, lasting nuclear pollution practically permanent radioactive contamination on this planet is a possibility and even a probability unless some present policies are changed soon. Well, it happened. Therefore, I believe our descendants will not forgive faint-hearted efforts from any of us. Mike Gravel, U.S. Senator from Alaska, Washington, D.C., March 1st, 1971. Wow, 20 years to the day, huh? The next, uh, the, we're, now we're going to read the introduction, uh, which is called The Nuclear Juggernaut. But I am going to stop here. As you can't tell, I'm completely exhausted. Uh, the radio show is on tomorrow. I hope you'll join us. It's the Nuclear Alerts. I'll be talking a little bit about social uh, engineering. Frankly... I'm probably going to talk a lot about social engineering because I'm really sick of the hate machine. I'm really sick of people like finding out ways to hate each other. So um, put your courage feet on, you guys. We need them. Ciao.